just give you a report that uh, well, I finished the uh, little book with God's help. Uh, uh, Love is the greatest, and it is at Faith Printing, and they're going to get back the middle of next week with some proposals on it, and so it's moving right along, but it's at the printers now, so uh, we just uh, give God the glory for that. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, how many of you uh, appreciate the Word of God? Amen. And you appreciate the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I'm going to read to you the first a uh, few verses of Luke chapter 4, and then we'll go back and talk about these scriptures. And verse 1, Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for forty days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and afterward, when they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God... Command this stone to become bread. Verse 4, But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, Throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He shall give His angels charge over you to keep you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said to him, It has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Then Jesus returned in the power of of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went out through all the surrounding region, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. And so let's back up to this verse 1 and uh, talk about these verses that we just read. Uh, Jesus, first of all, it says, being filled with the Holy Spirit. You, you know, Jesus is all God and all man. He said, uh, an example for us that we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and particularly as we go out and minister and take Jesus to a lost and hurting world. Amen? Amen. And I, you think of the uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's kind of like these toys you buy. And I know uh, you parents are really familiar with this and grandparents too that a lot of these toys, they'll have, they come with batteries, rechargeable batteries. But uh, sometimes people have played with them in the store and all, and usually the instruction says to charge those batteries to their fullest charge to start with. So you get that toy, and the first thing you do is, is charge it up. Well, when we're born again, we get the batteries, amen? <laughs> but then we need to be sure that they're fully charged, and the, we refer to that as the baptism in the Holy Spirit, that's the empowerment of the believer. But then as the batteries run down, we have to charge them up again, don't we? Yes. So we need to keep our batteries charged. We need to stay full of the Holy Spirit if we're to be able to walk the way the Lord wants us to walk in this uh, plan that He's called us to. Amen? Amen. It's like uh, filling your car up with gas. It's good to have a full tank, but if you drive that car you're going to need to go back to the service station and fill it back up. Yeah. And if you're a believer, you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you still, if you're just going through life, just life itself, you know, causes us to need to continually be refilled with the Holy Spirit. Those that you see getting filled with the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2, for example, 
you see those same ones getting refilled with the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 4. And so it's, it's just life itself uh, to live this life the way God's called us to. We need to stay full of the Holy Spirit. Well, I look on this church as a filling station. We can come here and we can worship God. We can praise Him and uh, get in the Word of God and get filled with the Holy Spirit. But then we need every day in our personal life, we need to read the Word of God, digest the Word of God. Uh, Jesus said the, Spirit, the, the words that I speak are spirit and they are truth in John 6, 63. So when we read the Word of God, well, we're actually, uh, there's an impartation of the Holy Spirit to us. And, this, and so we need to digest the Word of God every day. We need to have a um, lifestyle of worshiping God and praising God and uh, looking for Jesus, uh, you know, all along the way. But here's another point. It says, Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit returned uh, from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. You know, uh, he was led by the Spirit. Right. He didn't lead the Spirit. The Spirit led him. And so he set an example for us. Jesus is all God and all man. And he, his ministry he did through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit. But he was led by the Spirit. Right. And this is one of the biggest mistakes that I have seen uh, in 30 years, almost 30 years in ministry, is that believers get this backwards sometimes. They get the idea that the Holy Spirit is just like their servant, that they lead the Holy Spirit. But that's not the way it works. We need to seek the Holy Spirit's uh, guidance and wisdom and His leading in every situation of life and follow Him. Yes, sir. That's the key to victory. Right. Amen. Right. To be led by the Holy Spirit. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. You know, that means, well, I think of the verse... Proverbs chapter 3 says, uh, trust, Solomon wrote, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. Amen. One translation says, in all your ways make Christ known. But we need to look for Jesus in every situation of life and be led by Him. Amen. Amen. And that is the key to victory. As we, in driving your car, going on a trip, uh, I don't know if anybody still uses maps anymore, but maps are good, you know. You can uh, look at that map and uh, plan out your trip and kind of look at, uh, I still like to look at a map, you know, particularly if we're looking for places to go and parks and stuff like that, a map's a good way to do it. But we also have this GPS now. It's even on my iPhone. It's finally gotten... They finally got the technology simple enough for my simple mind to be able to use it. I can just uh, be somewhere and I can uh, talk to my iPhone and I can say, take me here or take me there. And then this voice gives me each turn of the way until I get to my destination. Well, we have the Word of God. This really is the map for our lives. This is the blueprint for our lives. This is, this is what we go by and we, this is the way... One of the ways we hear from God is through the written Word of God. And the Holy Spirit is involved in imparting direction to us through the written Word of God. And He'll breathe on these Scriptures and bring them alive to us and give us direction through them. But then also, we have the Holy Spirit abiding within us. And we have that still, small voice of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will say, go this direction or go that direction. We need to follow the still, small voice. Sometimes it's just a nudge, and we need to go with that Holy Ghost nudge. Amen. And that's, that's, the, uh, that's the God positioning system, GPS. The God positioning system is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We need to be uh, filled with the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and then we need to obey the Holy Spirit and uh, read the instruction manual on how to be led by the Holy Spirit. Not how to lead the Holy Spirit, but how to be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. I read about this one man. 
he was trying to cut down trees and he uh, about the best he could do was cut down with his axe about five trees a day. So he went to a hardware store and he was talking to the man and said, I need a better axe. I can only cut down about five trees a day with this axe. And the man told him, right, no, what you need is a power saw. And he showed him this power saw. I said, man, you can cut down 25, 30 trees a day with this power saw. So the man bought the power saw and uh, after a few days he came back, had blisters all over his hands, just wore out. He said, I'm bringing this thing back. It's not any good. He said, I, I've tried it several days. He said, I used to at least cut down five trees with the ax. He said, I can't even cut down one tree a day with this power saw. And the salesman, you know, had it there on the counter. He said, well, let me look at it. And he pulled the rope and cranked it up and went, vroom. And that man said, what's that noise? <laughs> and he had never bothered to read about how you crank that thing up. He was trying to just use it manually like a saw, you know, manual saw. Well, you know, we have a, uh, we have a book, an instruction manual. And it helps to read the manual if we want the Holy Spirit to lead us Amen. and empower us and we want to see His power fully utilized in our lives. Yes, Glory to God. I learned, that those of you that are parents, and most, most of us in here have been parents and grandparents, and I, I learned early on, don't get things too complicated to give to your kids on Christmas morning. Some of these things, you know, you just have to stay up all night long putting them together and everything. And I, I, uh, uh, I how many of you been there before? And how many of you have decided, well, you know, I know how to put this thing together. I don't need to read the instruction manual. I, I just slap it together and you wind up and you get done. It's not working right. You got all these leftover parts that are not part of that whatever it was you were assembling and you know you've left them out and they went somewhere and you say, okay, let's, let's start over and you have to take it all apart again and then you go step one, step two, step three. Well, it's the same with the Word of God. If we're to be led by the Holy Spirit, uh, we, need to be, we need to read the textbook. You know, we're in the school of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is our teacher. He leads us but in every school you have a textbook. In every course you have a textbook. This is the believer's textbook. The Bible, the Word of God. And what makes us think that we can uh, be pleasing to God if we don't bother to be a good student of God's Word. So if we want to be led by the Holy Spirit, we need to fill ourselves up with the Word. We need to have a lifestyle of worshiping and praising God, praying with the understanding, praying with the Spirit, seeking God, praising God, looking for Him in every situation in life. Amen. Even when things don't look too good, we need to look for Jesus. And, and he'll, he'll lead us through that. And here, uh, Jesus was... Uh, in, the Holy Spirit led Him into the wilderness. Just because you're in a wilderness experience does not mean you're outside the will of God. It just could be that the Holy Spirit has led you there to give you a great victory that is going to stick with you and help you the rest of your life. So we need to be led by the Spirit instead of... Instead of uh, we give the devil too much credit. <laughs> you know, it seems like any kind of wilderness experience, we're, we're always out there blaming the devil, making the devil bigger and bigger. It could be the Holy Spirit led us into that situation to teach us something that'll give us victory after victory over the evil one. Can you shout hallelujah? But the key is we need to understand the Word of God. Jesus answered the temptations from the enemy in all three of these instances with it is written. He's quoting, he quoted from the uh, book of Deuteronomy. It's good to read the Old and New Testament. This, uh, this is all the Word of God. We need it all. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, the first temptation, the devil said to him, if you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. You know, that's what the devil would like for all of us to do. He offers us these rocks. And he wants us to chew those rocks and break our teeth on them thinking we're chewing the bread of God. That we're digesting the bread of God. But Jesus said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. This is the bread for the born again spirit man. The word of God. This is what nourishes our inner man or inner woman. It is the word of God that we feed on. 
And so if we don't uh, feed on the Word of God and digest the bread of His Word, then we're malnourished and we're not able to uh, walk in the victory that God wants us to walk in. We're not able to get through that wilderness experience with the, the uh, message that God wants us to bring out of, out of that experience. You know, Jesus came out of this wilderness experience. He returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. Amen. News of Him went out through all the surrounding area. He came out anointed with power, overflowing with power, the power of the Holy Spirit. Can you shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Amen. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. I think of some of the stones that uh, Satan has offered humanity. Sometimes it's the stones of religion rather than relationship. And as people are in that wilderness experience, they're, they're led by religion rather than by the Holy Spirit. What's powerful is that relationship that we have with the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Amen. And some, sometimes... Uh, you know, the problem is that people uh, eat rocks rather than the, the bread of the Word of God because Satan offers it to them. For example, if a person is sick, sometimes people think, well, by being sick, I'm going to bring glory uh, to the Lord. Some sort of No, it's, get, it's believing God for your healing. That's right. The Bible reveals to us, the Scriptures do, that healing is part of this bread. Yes. By His stripes, you were healed. The healing is part of our redemption. So if we're, if we're experiencing sickness, the devil would like for you to say, well, I'm, I'm sick and, and uh, I'm just going to uh, uh, bring glory to God by uh, uh, being sick. No, God wants you to be well yes, and believe God for His healing. So we need to know what the bread of God's Word tells us yes, or we'll wind up eating religious stones which are not good for our spiritual digestive system. Right. Amen? Amen? Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You know, there's some people that think that, it's, that they equate holiness with poverty. Right. The Word of God does not tell us that. You know, if, if we're in a situation where uh, we're in a situation of lack, uh, the, the devil will come to you and say, you just need to stay poor the rest of your life because that's holiness. That's not what the Word of God says. The, uh, well, the gospel came for all people. But God wants to help us in every, situ in every situation of life. And He wants to be there and help us in every situation of life. But the Word of God says, for example, in 3, uh, 3 John verse 2, uh, He said, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So the bread of God's Word tells us that He wants us to come through that wilderness experience that we may be going through a time of lack. He wants to bring us out into a place of abundance. Amen. Amen. So we need to, if we don't understand God's Word, we wind up digesting the wrong thing with our spirit man and not getting the victory that God wants us to have. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. But the key again is to be led by the Spirit of God. You know, I have run across believers and uh, that, that think that like they treat the Holy, talk about the Holy Spirit like the Holy Spirit is some kind of uh, servant of theirs. And, you know, they just order the Holy Spirit around here and there. You know, that's not a good way to be. We need to seek God and ask Him, Lord, what is it you want me to do in this situation? Knowing that He's not a man that He should lie and He'll never tell us something that disagrees with the written Word of God. Amen. But I've, I've seen believers get into religious pride and you would think that uh, they were the master of the Holy Spirit, the way they talk. We need to be humble in the presence of God if we want God to work on our behalf. Amen. He gives grace to the humble. He resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. But, uh, let, let's move on here a little bit. It says, then the devil taking him up on a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give to you in their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I will give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only 
you shall serve. And so the, so, so Satan's uh, place of authority here on the earth is in the uh, lives of unredeemed mankind. He has no authority in the life of the believer. Amen. And so uh, the, 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 where he received authority was when Adam and uh, Eve sinned and disobeyed God and sin moved in and that gave authority to Satan. But when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we're, not, no, we're no longer under the influence of the principality of the power of the air. That was what um, Paul referred uh, to as Satan in Ephesians chapter 2. He said, uh, before we came to Christ, we were all under his sway and under his influence. And so it's unredeemed humanity that, it, that uh, where Satan has authority in their lives. But when we come to uh, accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, and we're born again, we become children of God, we need to understand Satan no longer has authority in our lives. We're not part of his kingdom. We're part of the kingdom of God. And Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God resides in our hearts. Amen. And uh, in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, the scriptures and Jesus said this, Behold, I give you the authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. We have authority over the power of the enemy. We've been given the use of the name of Jesus, and we have the word of God, amen, as the sword of the Spirit. So we need to learn to say it is written in the same way that Jesus said it is written. Let me ask this question for all of us. What would make us think that if Jesus had to use the Word of God when Satan tempted him, what would make us think that we could have victory uh, without using the written Word of God? No, we, we need to digest the Word of God, know the Word of God, have it in our hearts so that we can have the victory that Jesus achieved for us on the cross at Calvary, that we'll be able to appropriate it in our lives through the power of the Holy Spirit and being led by the Holy Spirit. Well, notice he said that he showed him uh, these kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And this is the way the enemy tempts people. He tempts them with things that they don't realize are just momentary compared to eternity. They don't last for very long. Uh, the, the, the kingdom of God is eternal. And that's what we need to go with. Amen. I, I saw years ago a program on television and uh, these uh, satanic rock groups. I know not all rock and roll music is of Satan. Uh, you know, there's Christian rock music and it's the lyrics you have to pay attention to. But there are these satanic uh, rock groups that they sing about Satan and in worship to Satan and they're usually promoting drugs and uh, uh, illicit sex and all this kind of stuff. You have to, you know, we need to listen, folks, to what kind of music we're listening to because it could be that we're listening to something that's been authored by Satan himself. That's right. So young people especially, but all ages, pay attention to what kind of music you're listening to because, uh, you know, the the wrong kind of spirit can be getting in your hearts if you listen to the wrong kind of music. Music is a powerful, uh, a, a power, powerful spiritual force. Well, I, they, they were interviewing these satanic rock groups and there were several, not just one, but several who said that a Satan had come to them, I guess in a dark vision or s some sort of way. It didn't give all the details, but they were uh, all probably during while they were on drugs too because most of a lot of their music uh, is about drugs and promoting that kind of lifestyle. And Satan had come to them and they had made deals with the devil. And I, one of them said, oh, Satan's made us multimillionaires. We're, we're, we're uh, Satan worshipers and um, they sold millions and millions of records because they had made a deal with the devil. If, if they don't accept Jesus though, what happens when a person makes a, a deal with the devil like that? And it could be a, a person that's in business or something. Satan comes and tempts them and says, I'm going to make you a multimillionaire if you'll do this and do that. But the things that they ask the person to do are contrary to God's word. Dishonest things, things that are, are not within the uh, 
guidelines of the Word of God, not within the flow of the Holy Spirit. And they make a, a deal with Satan, but what they don't understand what they're doing is uh, that what they think is something good is only momentary Amen. compared to eternity. And when the devil gets through with people like that, you know what he does with them? When he gets done with them, they think that they've just, uh, uh, re just really had it made and been successful in everything. If they don't eventually repent and accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, sometimes he'll take them out with a drug overdose or something earlier than they thought. And he just puts a hook in their soul and drags them screaming down to hell. It's a terrible, horrible place. So uh, when a person uh, goes with Satan, those uh, benefits that they think are benefits are only momentary anyway and are minuscule compared to the blessings of eternity that we have through Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I know I'm getting serious here, but this is serious business. Amen. Amen. Verse 9, then he brought him, this is where I was getting ahead of myself, then he brought him to the Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, his, angel, his angels, he shall give his angels charge of you to keep you. He left out a, a part of this verse here. You know, Satan knows the scriptures and he'll try to use the scriptures against believers if they'll let him, but it'll be out of context. Here he left out part of this verse. This is out of Psalm 91 that Satan was quoting, but he left out in all your ways. The verse in Psalm 91 reads, He shall give his angels charge of you to keep you in all your ways, and in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. He left out in all your ways because, see, he, he knew the way of Jesus was not to do some cheap publicity stunt where he jumps off a 400-foot um, that was a 400-foot drop off the pinnacle of the temple there into the Kidron uh, Valley. And so, uh, you know, th that was not the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, not some cheap publicity stunt where the Jerusalem Post the next morning says, uh, man claiming to be Messiah jumps off the pinnacle of the temple. That was not his way. His way was the way of the cross Amen. where he offered himself as a sacrifice uh, for all of us, for all of our sins, where He took our judgment. He took our place on that cross. He suffered and died for us. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus uh, our Lord. He took the judgment, the wages of our sin, took our judgment when He died on the cross at Calvary. That was the way of Jesus. But you know, because He selected that way, the Bible says that when He did that, this is uh, recorded over in... Uh, I believe it's the book of Philippians that he triumphed over them, Satan and demonic powers in it, the work that he did on the cross at Calvary and made a show of them openly in the heavenly realms. Amen. <laughs> that was the, that, that's the kind of act that Jesus does is to exhibit his power, the power of the Holy Spirit over all the power of the enemy. And that's what he's called us to be as vessels, to take up our crosses and follow Jesus. That means if we're going to be led by the Holy Spirit rather than by the way of the world, it means to forgive our enemies. Not, not ask God to curse them. You know, that's, that's the devil. Jesus said to, uh, he said, but I say to you, bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. So Jesus calls us to bless those who curse us, to turn the other cheek. Amen. It's getting quiet in here. But Satan comes along and tempts the believer and says, you, you need to ask God to curse them. Mm -mm. God says, pray for them. Forgive them. Amen. We were watching... Uh, uh, Francis Frangipan's teaching. He was teaching on the kingdom of God. By the way, these discipleship classes, they're at, at 9.30. We have about four of them left with Francis Frangipan. I encourage you to come. These teachings are wonderful. We're showing DVDs of his teaching on the kingdom of God and uh, just wonderful teaching. But he was uh, talking about, you know, that instead of complaining about having enemies, we just need to... Uh, Look on it like this. This just gives me an opportunity to apply the Word of God in my life because Jesus told me to uh, love my enemies. This just gives me somebody else to love. 
Amen. And to walk in love toward. Praise the Lord. But this pride, uh, there are many that believe pride was the original sin. Well, it was part of the temptation for sure that came against Adam and Eve. You find these same areas of temptation. The, the devil doesn't have any new tricks. He just has the same old temptations that he's always had. He may dress it up with modern technology or whatever, but it's the same old temptation. For example, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, uh, it talks about, he, he told uh, Eve, of course Adam was right there with Eve, the tree was good for food. And there you have the lust of the flesh. When he tempted Jesus, he said, command this stone to become bread. So you have the lust of the flesh. Same thing that he tempted uh, Adam and Eve with. Here he is tempting Jesus Christ with. You have the lust of the eyes. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 6, Satan tempted Adam and Eve with this. He was talking about the forbidden fruit. He said it was pleasant to the eyes. And, in, and then he tells us Jesus in Luke chapter 4 here, he showed him all uh, the kingdoms of the world. So there's the lust of the eyes. And then the third general area is the pride of life. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 6, when Satan tempted Adam and Eve, he said, a tree desirable to make one wise. And then when he tempted Jesus Christ here in Luke chapter 4, he said, throw yourself down from here, you know, from the pinnacle of the temple. An act of pride. Of course, the Lord would not do that. But uh, you have these same areas, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. He doesn't, he, he, basically he tempts us in these three areas. And we need to learn to be able to recognize when it's a temptation from Him. And we need to be led by the Holy Spirit. Can somebody say amen? amen. The, the thing is, He doesn't know, it's basically these three areas that He tempts us in. And if we'll learn to recognize Him, when those temptations come, we can use the Word of God. And uh, with being led by the Holy Spirit, we can see Him defeated right. in the same way that Jesus defeated Him. Yes, Amen. Being led by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, Jesus answered and said to him, It has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. We, we need to be led by the Holy Spirit and uh, uh, let the Holy Spirit lead us in how to appropriate the Word of God as we walk this walk and talk this walk. Talk this talk. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, talking about this, uh, this pride, uh, this is something that can get a hold of a believer. They can get born again, get filled with the Holy Spirit, and God start using them. Then the next thing you know, they begin to exalt themselves. And if we'll just always remember, always give God the glory. That's one reason the name of this church is the Lord's Glory Church. This very name should help all of us that attend here to know that in our lives we should always give the Lord the glory. And if we'll remember to do that, uh, it'll keep us from leaping off the pinnacle of pride. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, we always need to give people Jesus. You know, if we're sharing a testimony, give Jesus the glory. Point them to Jesus. Always lift up His name rather than our own name. And uh, never let it be about us that we did this or we did that. But God did this through me. Jesus helped me through this situation. The Lord healed me. It was the Lord that helped me to pay my debts and showed me how to get out of debt and, and uh, helped me with His wisdom and applying His principles in my life. It was God that led me. It was God that led me out of that wilderness situation. And I, and I came out of it. I came out of that test. I didn't come out uh, burned. I came out better. I didn't come out... Bitter, I came out better. I didn't come out uh, burned. I came out refined. Yeah. Amen. Right. Because of His power. Because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Can somebody Amen. shout hallelujah? Amen. 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 You know, we live in a society of we want everything instant. We want, uh, 
we, we can go through McDonald's and just make the order at the window and go pick it up, you know, and pay. We can go online and find out information that's at the tips of our fingers, or we can just even ask a question into our iPhones and uh, get an answer. You know, we want everything instant. But God, in the way He teaches us, He leads us through. And things are not always instant. Sometimes the greatest victories take the most time. But you know, those are the kind of victories that we don't forget because they're uh, memorialized uh, in our memories and in our hearts. And when we face something similar to that again in our lives, we remember how God, we, like David, when he faced Goliath, he said the same God that empowered me to slay the bear and the lion will empower me to slay this uncircumcised Philistine as he uh, faced Goliath. You know, it's, every time we go through a wilderness experience and we're led by the Holy Spirit and He brings us out, we ought to come out uh, more humble. We ought to come out of that experience more humble than when we went in and able to hear uh, the, the voice of the Holy Spirit in our hearts better than before we went in and more attuned to the Word of God and uh, appropriating it in our lives. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Amen. Well, you know, the devil, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't have any new tricks. It's the same basic areas, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life that he tempts us in. And if we'll understand that and be, learn to recognize him, we can have victory. We know his moves. I was reading in uh, Tony Evans. We've been going through uh, a book of his in the men's meeting. We just finished it up. And I was reading in another book by Tony Evans about how his brother can't remember which state he grew up in, but his brother was the state champion uh, in wrestling, in amateur wrestling, wrestling, and at college. And uh, he was uh, coming up in the, uh, uh, before he won the championship, the guy that he was going to wrestle had won it three times in a row. And, uh, you know, his brother said, you know, I believe that I'm going to be able to win. And nobody thought he would win. And he went up against this guy that had been the state champion three times in a row and beat him soundly. And people were amazed because he wasn't as big as the other guy and didn't appear to be as strong, but he won. And people asked Tony Evans' brother, how did you do that? And he said, I watched hours and hours of videos of uh, this, my opponent wrestling, and I knew every move he has. And whenever he made a move, I was ready for him. <laughs> well, Satan only has three moves when it comes to temptations. It's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So if we'll remember that, we can be ready, amen, amen. with the power of the Holy Spirit, and we can get victory over him every time. And who do we give glory to? Jesus, Jesus Christ. None of us can stand against the enemy on our own power or on our own merits. It's only through the power of the Holy Spirit that we can have victory uh, over uh, Satan and demonic powers. But with the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, the Lord can use us to demonstrate the victory that He's already achieved over Him by the works that He did on the cross at Calvary. Yes, Somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, it's all a matter of just looking for Jesus. And it, it, it's... Uh, he's, he'll give us, he'll, it'll line up with the Word. But you know, maybe you're going through a storm. And maybe you're looking for Him out there walking on the waves, bidding you to come get out of the ship and walk on the waves. But maybe, you, you know, there was another time where a storm came up and Jesus wasn't out there on the waves. He was asleep in the hull of the boat. <laughs> and they, had, they woke Him up and said, Lord, there's a storm coming up. See, you know, that's why we need to stay prayed up and stay full of the Holy Spirit so we can be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Is He wanting us to get out like He bidded Peter to come to Him? Or is, he, or is He not out there, but He's already with us in the boat? We just need to wake Him up and, and say, Lord, what do you want me to do here? Because it, it's not, you know, we can get too formulated is what I'm saying. If we're not careful, we need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to close with this one uh, personal illustration. I've got on a little longer than I intended to, but uh, I know years ago, I'd, uh, when we were traveling before I started pastoring, we had been invited to 
minister out in California. It was a new Christian TV talk format show that was going to be coming on the air, and it was getting a lot of pre publicity. They were uh, each program was expected to have you know hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of viewers. And I got a phone call that the head of that ministry wanted me to come out there and be on that program where they would interview me and I'd be able to give my testimony. And I just said yes, just not even thinking about it. Well, to pray about everything. Bought a uh, non-refundable ticket, and it was getting ready. The uh, day before, I was supposed to go to California. I was sitting in the chair thinking about the trip and just praying. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, don't go. I just dropped like this, you know, because I'd been excited about going. You always said, don't go. So I called him. I said, what did you do? Did you go and fast and pray, you know, all night long? No, when you know the voice of the Holy Spirit, you might as well just accept what he says right then. Going and fasting for a day, it's not going to change. what. If you know it's the Holy Spirit, just do what the Holy Spirit says to do. So I called the ministry. And I told them, I, I'm sorry, I can't come. And they said, why? And I said, well, the Holy Spirit just, I don't know why, but the Holy Spirit told me not to come. And I'm just, uh, for that reason, I'm not going to come. And then they began, proceeded to tell me, of course, that I didn't know how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> that was telling me that one reason why I shouldn't go, <laughs> you know, confirming what, what the Holy Spirit told me. But they were so upset with me about that, that I figured, well, you know, we were... Uh, members of Lakewood and uh, traveling out from Lakewood in evangelism. And so I figured, well, they're probably going to call my pastor and complain. So I, I made an appointment with Pastor John Osteen, Shore and I did, and I told him what I had done. And, and when he found out that I was going to be uh, going out to work with this particular ministry, he said, uh, you know, Lakewood is a huge church and uh, a lot of ministers going out from there at the time. And uh, uh, you didn't clear everything with the pastor unless you thought it was something that you needed to discuss with him and uh, so I hadn't talked to him about it he said uh, Tom if I'd known you were thinking about going out there he said I would have told you don't get anywhere near that ministry and the person that heads up there just stay as far away from them as you can he said he looked at me John Osteen looked at me he said Tom God really loves you the Holy Spirit really loves you <laughs> because he said you just don't know the trouble you would have brought on your life by going out there and, and uh, being on that program. You know, I noticed the program never aired. They canceled the thing. It never went on. The, 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 this new program that was being advertised, it never came into being. If I had gone out there, it wouldn't have gone out over the air anyway. The Holy Spirit already knew that. And there were some severe problems uh, in that particular ministry. So God knows everything. We just, uh, we just need to learn when we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and know it's Him, accept what He says. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Go with peace. Even if, even if it goes against the natural understanding, God is supernatural. And He'll tell us things that uh, the natural mind doesn't know. But He won't go against His Word. Amen. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, we thank You for the Word of God that does not return void. And uh, Lord, thank you for the uh, leading of the Holy Spirit. And uh, Lord, we just, uh, as we go through life, Lord, help us just to ask, what, what is Jesus doing in this situation? What is he doing? Look for Jesus. Not only what would Jesus do, what is Jesus doing? Right here in this situation that I'm in. And Lord, help us to flow with your Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. And I'd like to ask everyone with your heads bowed, uh, eyes closed, and an attitude of prayer and with a reverence for God to look into your hearts and ask yourself this question. Do I know that I know that I know if I were to die in the next 60 seconds, I would go to heaven? And if you're saying uh, within your, your heart and within your inner man, inner woman, you know, to be honest with God and with myself, I'm not sure I would go to heaven if I were to die in the next minute. I need prayer. Pray for me. I'm not where I ought to be with God. I'm not ready to meet God. I'm not sure I'm right with God. I need, to, I need someone to lead me in a prayer to resolve this in eternity. I, I want to accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior and receive eternal life. And to know that I know, have that inward witness that I know that I know that I know 
that I'm a child of God, I'm a new creation, I'm born again. If that's you, I want you to lift your hand up high, then you can put it back down. I, I want to receive Jesus. God bless you. Hallelujah. If you're watching by internet, just lift your hand wherever you are. God sees your hand. Let's all stand to our feet. And if you lifted your hand, I invite you to come up to the front and make a public, to make a public declaration that you're accepting Jesus. You know, Jesus said, if you'll accept me before men on earth, uh, 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 confess me before men on earth, I'll confess you before my Father in heaven. Hallelujah. I wonder if Chris Holloway could help us. And uh, uh, if you could just step forward a little more. God bless you. <laughs> I just, we're going to, let's all say this prayer. We could have people watching by internet that are saying it for the first time. And uh, Chris is just there to encourage you and to stand with you. And let's all say this together. Heavenly Father, have mercy on me, a sinner. I repent for all my sins and ask your forgiveness. I open up my heart to your Son, Jesus Christ. Say, Jesus, be my personal Lord and Savior. I ask you to give me a new life in you. I declare now I'm a child of God. You're my Lord and Savior. I'm born again. I'm a new creation. I'm forgiven. I have a new beginning. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Let's give Jesus a hand clap. And, uh, Brandon, would you and uh, Chris, uh, you go in the kitchen area back there in the corner, and let's give, let's give the Lord a hand clap again. And, we want to, you may be seated, and if uh, you're watching by internet and you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, please click on that praise report button and let us know that you did. We just want to rejoice with the angels in heaven and give God the glory over what He's doing in your life. Also, we have six free books available online for all the uh, viewers. If you'll click on the free books button, you'll receive instructions on how to get those free of charge. We have our books in paperback form on this table and on the right as you go out. Yeah, for those that are here, they're available to you free of charge as well. And uh, Teresa, could we have some prayer partners up front? And uh, we just want to invite you, if you need prayer for any, anything in your life, maybe you need healing in your body. Maybe you feel like, I just feel like I've gotten drained. I, it, that doesn't mean you've committed sin. You know, if... Um, I mean, if we have, we know what to do if we have sin, we just repent. But the, the, fact, the fact that you need to be refilled with the Holy Spirit, that doesn't mean that it's because of sin. It's just as we go through life, just like driving your car, you know, you, you, you need to get refilled. And so this is a filling station. And so if you say, you know, I just feel like I need to get refilled with the Holy Spirit. If that's what you want, we invite you to come up and let these prayer partners pray for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe you've been fighting depression. The Lord delivers from op oppression, depression. Amen. Same, uh, you know, Jesus went about healing all those who were oppressed by the devil, the Bible says, for God was with him. Well, he still does that. And you, if you've been fighting in that area, we're here to help you and to pray uh, uh, over your life. And uh, perhaps you... Uh, your heart's broken about something. He, the, uh, if we were to have read on in Luke 4, we'd read where the Spirit of the Lord is upon him. Jesus said he has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. And that same anointing is on the church today. Jesus is here to heal the brokenhearted. Uh, maybe there's some other area that you need prayer in. Uh, don't ever be embarrassed about coming forward for prayer. It's, it's just good to have agreement. The Bible says to pray for one another that you may be healed. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, uh, sure, would you come up and stand with me and uh, we'll be up here too to pray if you need prayer. And if you could turn my audio down for just a bit.
golden tree, sesame. Is it a catering type? Okay. And let's lay hands on this and bless it. Lord, we just ask you. We just want you to hear this uh, testimony. Let's all give God the glory as we hear this. Last week, I was feeling old and fat and hurting. <laughs> <laughs> and the devil kept saying, you're getting old and fat and you're falling apart. <laughs> because I've had a problem with my legs for years. And this one has really bothered me in that it was always out of socket and the knee and the pain and everything hurt. Well, Pastor Sharon Tom prayed for me last week that my strength would be renewed like the eagles. And I'm telling you, I got a new knee. I got new ligaments. That thing doesn't hurt. It's like brand new. <laughs> and I can do the treadmill and deal with the other two problems now in the natural. Amen. <laughs> we have glory to the Lord Praise Jesus. The Lord. Let's give Jesus the glory. Amen. All we did was pray Jesus did the work in her body. You know, it, hallelujah. You know, he does renew our youth like the eagles. That's in uh, uh, Psalm 103. Uh, that verse says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who uh, forgives all your iniquities, who uh, heals all your diseases, who redeems your lives from destruction, who uh, crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And that satisfying the mouth with good things not only would speak of food eating and that being blessed, but also the words we speak with our mouth as well over our situation. So if you feel like, you know, I, I want that... I believe in God for a renewal of my youth. Like the eagles, stand up if that's what you're believing God for. A renewal of your youth like the eagles. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. I believe this is of the... Yeah. I've shared this before, but I read about eagles. And interestingly, they lived to be over 100 years of age. One lived 114 years in captivity in France. And at about the middle of their age, about 50 years of age, they go through a special molting process where they lose all their feathers and their beak becomes gnarled and they look like a mess. But they, uh, they scrape that uh, gnarled beak off on a rock and then they grow out new feathers and they look like a young eagle again <laughs> after they're through with that. So maybe you felt like you've been going through one of those molting 
uh, processes in your, maybe you feel like you're, have been losing your feathers and your beak's gotten a little gnarled. Well, I'm telling you, be encouraged. Your youth is being renewed like the eagles. And you're coming through this with, uh, with renewal in your heart and in your physical body. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask you to renew our youth like the eagles in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I say this from the 91st Psalm. With long life will He satisfy you and show you His salvation. And I'll put in parentheses in all situations of life. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Let's give Jesus a hand clap. Amen. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Well, God bless you. Uh, go out and win the world for Jesus. Amen.